Turner Stephen Bruden built a high-end reputation as a writer and performing artist. He was a virtuoso guitar player, singer, songwriter, actor, record producer, storyteller, and a good friend to many. Stephen grew up immersed in music. His jazz drummer father ran a record store where Stephen and his brother Sumter would be treated to only the very best that music had to offer. A native of Fort Worth, Stephen was uniquely positioned from the very beginning to enjoy his musical destiny. Waiting for a long time. My dad was a really good um, jazz drummer. He was a good drummer, period, but his forte was bebop and also big band. Sumter and I grew up listening to everything that he brought home to play. And that makes an imprint on you when you're a kid. And then about the time that started this record store, he started selling records and you were listening to everything all the time. I remember going to a concert over here at TCU and my dad was playing and my mother and I were sitting there and she asked me if there was something up there that I, I liked. And I remember looking at Charlie Pearson playing guitar and said, I like that. That sound just went through me. I mean, I remember very vividly because I walked in the back, I almost felt sick to my stomach. I was just like, I couldn't get over how cool that instrument was. I had a little bluegrass band, and Jenkins Garrett and uh, Senko Phillips and David Ferguson. There wasn't really a scene, and there was just a bunch of kids that were kind of like-minded, and it, this wasn't unique. That was before there was a scene anywhere. You weren't trying to be in a scene. You were really playing because you wanted to play music. Seen or no seen, Fort Worth had a tradition of musical exchange between black musical giants like T-Bone Walker and Ornette Coleman, and white kids who would follow them. During his teens, Stephen and his buddy T-Bone Burnett recorded tracks in Burnett's studio, in between performing with the likes of Delbert McClinton. For Stephen, it was bluegrass by day and blues at night. Well, T-Bone and Burnett and I produced the first Robert E. Lee and the Five Careless Lovers live at the new Bluebird Lounge. Sumter was playing on that, and, uh, and basically we put a console on the pool table and the band played and everybody drank, and it was a wild night. It was great. Walk by faith, not by side. I said, all right, we'll do it this way. You be the engineer, T-Bone, and I'll throw the party. That's basically what happened. But by 1970, change was in the air. I had gone to L.A. with T-Bone Burnett and John Fleming, and that was pretty cool. I really liked it, but it was a bit much. And my friend Lindsey Holland, my oldest friend in the world, had um, wound up in Woodstock, New York. That's when Van Morrison was up there, and I think Dylan was up there, and the band was up there. That band called The Great Speckled Bird that was playing with Jim Colgrove and Amos Garrett. So I thought that was much more my liking. And it was a good thing I went to Woodstock, actually, because uh, I was able to woodshed on guitar nonstop. I heard uh, from a guy uh, that Van Morrison was looking for a guitar player that I would be perfect for it. I had like $100 I was going to start a checking account. So I went in there, and uh, I was in line to put my 50 bucks or whatever it was by that time in the bank. And Van Morrison was at the head of the line because he was leaving town that day to move to San Francisco. <laughs> I met Chris here in Fort Worth, and he was friends with Jim Meeker, who called me and said, look, there's, there's a friend of mine coming to town. He's a songwriter. I know that you're a musician. Would you be interested in meeting this guy? And, and then the next time I saw him, I saw that he was coming to New York. And so I had like, I think I had $3, and I'd gotten my girlfriend's sister's car and drove from Woodstock to New York. It was freezing cold and I got there he and Carly Simon were walking out I ain't gonna make that call. And I said, he said what are you doing here and I said I came to see you. and he goes I just finished I had no idea that they played so early you know Stephen would indeed go on the road with Chris Christopherson in 1971 and over the next two decades with Delbert McClinton Bonnie Raitt Christine McVie and others said, I don't want you baby I just want someone to hold me. I got too much rock and roll to be a wife. I can't live without a life. And I'm scared of growing older. So I'm bound to keep on running for my life. He 
would also do session work with everyone from Bob Dylan, Johnny Cash, Carly Simon, Elvis Costello, Willie Nelson, Jimmy Buffett, and a host of others. Thank you. But it was Christofferson who had launched Stephen's acting career. So take me In 1976, Chris called me and asked me if I would come out and work on The Star is Born. And we were having fun and talking back to each other, but we were getting a lot done. And I look over and there's Streisand had walked in the door and she turned to Chris at one point privately and said, I've never heard a side man talk back to the artist. And he goes, they're not side men. These are my best friends. They got to turn this stuff into rock and roll. They are rock and roll. The next night, we were to be rehearsing her stuff. And she said, I can't believe how good you guys played my stuff. I just think she thought of us as just being these kind of, well, we were pretty wild. Steven successfully expanded from being a musical sideman into acting, appearing both in movies and on television. Put that right on top of your head. I'm afraid you stepped in it this time, boy. Doc, can you talk to him, the crazy son of a bitch? I expect this will be a good lesson for you. <sighs> hey, Mike. Give me a pint. Rough day, huh? The worst. Sure you want a whole one? Oh, yeah. Hit me big time, baby. Jimmy.